Hello everybody and welcome. I'm talking to you today at the beginning of my term as president of the Royal Society of Medicine. I have the honour of following in the footsteps of the amazing Professor Sir Simon Wesley and I'd like to start by thanking Simon for his tireless work on behalf of the Society during his three years in the top job. I've learned so much from working so closely with someone so lively, of great intelligence, such sparkling wit and so many connections with key players in the healthcare section. He's set an extremely high bar for the incoming president to follow. The RSM is held in deep affection by so many people who've been touched by its activities over so many years. With a long and distinguished history, the society has acquired a formidable reputation as a cross-specialty organisation, sharing medical knowledge and educating healthcare professionals. For me personally, the RSM has been central to my own career from a very early stage. I very much doubt whether I would have been appointed to my first consultant post at the famous St. Bartholomew's Hospital without the networking opportunities afforded by the urology section here at Number 1 Wimpole Street and at RSM winter meetings. However, sadly there could be a hardly a less auspicious time to take up the reins as president. Thanks to COVID-19, our building at Number 1 Wimpole Street has been closed since the end of March. Indeed, this recording is taking place in late July in a pretty much empty building. This closure has impacted on our ability to generate income from our lecture theatres, our restaurant, our bar and hotel facilities, as well as our education programme. As a consequence, we're now facing a projected financial deficit of around £4 million in the current financial year and ongoing losses thereafter. And as a result, we're having, very sadly, to reduce the size of our workforce. While the £10 million we received as a result of the sale of Chandos House gives us some breathing space, it's clear that we need to make some significant changes going forward. They do say, however, that the darkest hour is just before the dawn. And to borrow a phrase from Lord Lamont, who I interviewed for our RSM In Conversation series last week, the green shoots of recovery may already be beginning to appear as we make our tentative steps to reopen our building from the 3rd of August, with appropriate social distancing, of course. And we very much look forward to seeing you here soon. Although in recent years we've had a high turnover of personnel at senior management level, we now have the good fortune to have an incomparable leadership team. With our chief executive, Michelle Acton, is supported by excellent directors, Neville Carter, Richard Whiteley and Nigel Collett, as well as a cohesive and motivated council of trustees. It's reassuring to know we have such a positive and competent team at the helm as we navigate our way through today's decidedly choppy waters. Even before COVID-19 catastrophe, the society was facing a structural financial deficit. However, out of this crisis comes an opportunity for significant and financially sustainable change. As president, I'm looking forward to working with Michelle and her team who are already evolving strategies on which, our, on which our future will depend. There are three key areas under consideration. Firstly, we need to look at how to make best use of number one Wimpole Street and to consider what space we really need for our members, education programmes and staff. We want to ensure that we offer a fantastic environment for our members to meet for work and for pleasure. COVID-19 will undoubtedly have lasting implications for the space we need for our education programmes and over 90% of our staff currently working at home have told us they'd like to work from home more than they did before the lockdown. Secondly, we need to look at our education programme. Working with our fantastic sections and also developing new programmes, we need to ensure we're delivering the teaching and learning that doctors and other healthcare professionals really need. Blended online and in-person programmes give us the opportunity to reach so many more people, both in the UK and overseas. The challenge in the current world is how to best develop a financially sustainable model. The third area under consideration is the development of the Society's philanthropic programme. We're fortunate indeed to be the beneficiary of a donation from the Cantor Charitable Foundation which allowed us to host an international COVID-19 conference on Monday the 27th of July, attracting more than 8,700 registered delegates. 
We're truly delighted that the Foundation's generosity to the Royal Society of Medicine will continue over the next five years. And I know that many members and non-members have already supported us through In Conversation and COVID-19 series of webinars, so thank you for that. Further philanthropic support for our education programme and library are vital for us to fulfil our charitable mission. Well, as I begin my time as president, there's much to celebrate. I mentioned that the closure of the building has required us to pivot our educational output to online webinars, and these have been remarkably well and widely received. Our free lunchtime COVID-19 series have attracted more than 50,000 delegates, and as many again have viewed them later on YouTube. They've also attracted over 1,000 mentions in the mainstream media. The potential for further increasing the reach, the reputation and influence of the RSM this way is clearly very considerable. Our popular In Conversation series has included interviewees such as Stephen Fry, Jonathan Sumption and Jeremy Hunt and has raised over £57,000 from donations. Smaller niche online meetings such as the wine tasting webinars with Jane McQuitty, wine correspondent to The Times, have also proved very popular. In conclusion, as the inspirational Sir Simon Wesley passes the baton to me as president of the RSM in the midst of a tumultuous change, it's clear that we have four urgent priorities. One, to achieve financial sustainability of our organisation through a range of measures, including how we use number one Wimpole Street. To develop the scope and content of delivery of education, to grow our membership amongst new audiences, both here in the UK and abroad. And finally, to embrace and champion diversity throughout the RSM. If I fail in these important objectives, I will, like any self-respecting Roman general, have to do the honourable thing and fall on my sword here in the atrium before the eyes of council and my successor, who for the first time will be selected by a full ballot of membership. That's not going to be a pretty sight. So do buckle up, join the team, and together let's transform the RSM into the successful institution that it really needs to be for a secure future. Together we're on a mission. Thank you.